Thanks everybody for coming here tonight. Is this super loud? It sounds very loud to me in the room. No, it's good. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, thanks for coming out this evening. Um, we, I know many of you have been part of some of our, um, uh, conversations along the way, not only over the past several weeks and months, um, but really over the last several years. Um, I know I, I joined the parks commission in 2018 and remembered getting that first dog incident report, I think in, in 2019 and thinking, oh shoot, there's something going on in our parks. And, um, we could see that when we were doing our, um, survey we did of the community, um, both um, a community-wide survey and then what's a specifically to shape the Hubbard and North Branch management plans, walks in the park, conversations with people. Um, and this has really been years of conversation and, and thought that's gone into this as a commission um, to figure out what the best path forward is as a community to make space for everybody in the parks and make sure that these places that we all really love um, can be valued and um, appreciated and, and uh, enjoyed by as many of us as possible. Um, I will start tonight with um, some commissioner introductions, um, the regular kind of um, or, or business order of the agenda and minutes. Um, and then we'll, we'll shift to the, the, work at hand of talking about um, how to find a path forward for Hubbard Park. Um, and um, so let's go ahead and get started. My name is Kasha Ranjo and I am chair of the Parks Commission. Nebraska, Parks Commissioner. Emily Donaldson, Parks Commissioner. Brewer, Parks Commissioner. Stephanie Hunt, Parks Commissioner. Staff. Alec Ellsworth, Parks Director. Sarah Barbero, Parks Staff. And um, we also have with us the dog committee. Jessa Bonner, dog committee. Dana Dwinell Yardley, dog committee. Robin Goman, dog committee. Diana Green, dog committee. Excellent. Um, for those of you in the audience, did you get everybody's name in the audience yet? Or um, I'm gonna pass around a piece of paper for you all to write your names on so that we can get add your names to the minutes. And for those of you uh, who are online, um, if you don't mind popping your name into the Zoom chat, especially since there are often a couple people at the computer or your name on Zoom may not be your um, name in real life. Um, all right, so May 13th agenda and May 7th minutes. Can I get a motion? Agenda and the minutes. Second. Andrew seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Passes unanimously. All right. Um, any comment on items that are not on the agenda? So we're mostly here to talk about dogs and Hubbard. Um, any public comment anybody would like to share before we move on? All right. Um, hearing none. Um, We'll move forward. I think tonight um, we want to, um, the conversation has been all across the board. I know there's a lot of information and misinformation floating around in the community. Um, and the process most recently, um, we all had a really, I think, fantastic discussion collectively about a week ago with um, all of us here in the front of the room, really, um, park staff, commissioners, the dog committee, um, was one of our, uh, a, a really great opportunity to just discuss. And it was an extra long meeting, thanks to those of you in the, in the public who, who um, st stood it out to attend and um, stick with us. Um, and it was a really important chance for us to all discuss various options we've been hearing into the, in the community, um, pros and cons. Um, and from out of that, um, what surfaced are a couple options that we're focused on thinking about tonight um, as a potential path forward. So um, central to this is the idea of zones and thinking about um, the park and kind of a north and south half where the, um, the core zone um, would be on leash and the um, northern zone would be off leash. Um, I can, when I get screen share working in a second, I can throw a map up here. Um, many of you have already seen it. Um, so the, the central idea is these zones. And then I think one of the questions that's open is 
is that the case at all times that it's um, on leash in the south and off leash in the north? Or is there kind of a time overlay where maybe in the mornings from eight, nine until eight, nine or 10, people could be off leash in that core zone um, and get the morning walks in, sustain that dog walking community. And then for the remainder of the day would be on leash in that core zone. Um, so those are the really things we're focused on tonight. Um, and especially for those who want to um, speak up, we would love to hear from you um, tonight. Um, but really focusing on those time pieces will be really helpful and informative for us. Um, I am going to what up, Emily, do you want to give a just overview of the I'll share this in a second, but you can share the pros and cons, not dive into it, just, but just how we came to it, how you came to it. Yeah, so I prepared a pros and cons chart based on those two proposed solutions that we came up with last week and um, circulated it to the dogs committee and the rest of the parks commission and the staff for comments. So the document that you'll see Kasha put up in a minute is kind of a compilation, um, but was written by me. And it tries to just summarize, like try to be a, as objective as possible about the pros and cons. Um, so we're just sharing this not as here's what the Par Parks Commission thinks, but kind of as a summary of some of the comments recently um, and helpful, hopefully background information for. Mm, I don't know that I'm going to be able to share it. Can you share it from yours? Um, and I want to turn to um, the four members of the dog committee who have worked really hard over months now, um, coming through a lot of feedback from the community um, and being really um, diving really deep into this discussion and these conversations um, and hear from you all the latest of your comments and your thinking on where we are now. Sure, thank you. Um, Jessa Barnard here on behalf of the dog committee and thank you to the park commission for um, giving us our charge and being so open to our feedback and working collaboratively with us over the past um, number of months. And yeah. also really wanna oh. thank the members of the public who have weighed in. Um, I think we, maybe this was already stated, but all of your comments, most of your comments are going not just to the park commission, but to the, our committee. And it's really helped us form um, our latest response, which is, I believe, um, posted now on the Park Commission website dated um, yesterday. And so we focused our comments on these um, core zone com uh, components and the time option. And this really reflects not our personal, what would sort of maybe work best for our own lifestyle or our own um, ways we enjoy visiting the park, but based on upholding the park mission of being forever available for the enjoyment of all and really focused on that for all piece. Um, we are really concerned about the volume of comments we've received from older um, folks in Montpelier who walk on need sort of flat accessible trails for walking their dog off leash. Um, many of us in the community could just shift our visits to the park to the northern zone, um, but we don't feel like um, there, there is a core, not insignificant component of our community who could not do that, who um, need to access these trails for a safe option for walking their dogs, um, which is a, a good for their dogs and themselves, their health um, and the health of their pets. Um, and so we've highlighted in our comments some of the folks we heard from, Renee, Alice, Julia, Elaine, Pat, Deb, Betty, Willem. Um, and thank you again for, for weighing in. And um, given that the trails in the core zone are really one of the only flat safe walking surfaces um, for this segment of our community. We do think that the hours, um, the off leash out, sorry, on leash hours should not begin um, before 10 a.m. At a, at a minimum. Um, and I wanted to highlight some other data. There was an email sent from um, actually one of my neighbors, um, Betty Woods, um, and yesterday also, right after I sent my memo and I felt like they are, are sorry, our collective memo, um, they worked really well together because she um, and some other community members walked the park on the mornings last Wednesday through Sunday to really look at the numbers of seniors using the Tower Trail and Accessible Trail. I think it focused actually on the, the Accessible or Adaptive Trail 
um, and the times that those folks were there, those seniors were there walking their dogs. And it really actually extends closer to 11 o'clock. Their request was actually 11. Um, and so feeling like that's when the bulk of this community um, would need to visit the park without another option. Um, they highlighted also that that seven fireplaces road becomes very icy in winter, which is true, um, and that it's also dark until at least 730 in the morning for a lot of the winter. So, you know, the option of, say, 8 a.m., for example, really wouldn't meet their needs. Um, so, again, to really come back to having the park available for everyone um, in, a, in a safe way um, – and the, that, yes, we we agree, we share the the value and the desire of the, the commission to add access for folks who don't feel safe being around um, off-leash dogs. We don't feel like that should be at the expense of individuals who really would not have any other option to exercise themselves and their pets and that to uphold those community values in the park mission statement. Um, 10 a.m. is sort of the minimum um, time that we would recommend. Thanks, Thank Jeff. you. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. for those of you on zoom there was a chicken phone ring going on in here just now <laughs> um all right thank you so much um i do um i want to open it up for public comment um andrew would you mind being the timekeeper once again um and we're going to have about an hour for um, folks to weigh in here. I know we've already heard from many of you um, via email and whatnot. Um, and I ask that you keep your comments to two minutes. Andrew's going to be the timekeeper. Um, Andrew will give you a 30 second warning. Um, and um, we'll keep things moving for about an hour here. Um, and really thinking about that time space um, in addition to the zones is really helpful. Um, and it's 5.18. Andrew, are you ready? Okay. Um, who? All right. Correct. And then in addition to that, it's this. I just want to make sure that the north side is protected for the population. Great question. So um, the light's a little, can you all see this okay? Or is it, okay. Um, so in this purple outline, which we're calling the core area, that, the, thank you, Alec. Um, this is the core. Right. And this is the north zone. So, in, we'll And then the question is essentially, if these are the two zones within the core zone, should that be off, uh, sorry, should that be on leash at all times, every single day, year round, no matter when you come to the park, you're on leash here and off leash here, or should this core zone be off leash in the mornings until eight, nine, 10 in the morning, so that somebody who came to the park in the morning until one of the time would have the entire park would be off leash and then beginning at eight, nine, 10, something like that. Um, this would become on leash and this would remain off leash. So, so just to be so, sorry, just to, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but nobody online can hear either you. Oh, or shoot. Or Oh, they can hear public and public. oh, you want to come up to the microphone? Or this, either that or you could just reiterate her question. Um, so that the, the north, but in any case, the north side would remain on leash. All the time. Correct. Um, okay. Sorry about that. For people online, um, she was asking to clarify the proposal. Um, and the uh so the these are the zones. I'm now pointing on my the computer screen. Oh, but it's not sharing my screen. Okay, so the purple zone um, would be the core, and the red zone is the north portion. And the question is whether the north portion is always off leash, the core, should that be on leash all the time, or should that be on leash until 8, 9, 10 in the morning? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm confusing things because I just said that backwards. The core being off leash 
in the mornings until eight, nine or 10 in the morning, and then on leash for the rest of the day. Did that clarify things? Or did I get the on and offs backwards and confuse everybody? Okay. North side would be off leash. Yeah. Thank you for the clarifying question. All right. Um, did you have a, um, I know that was a clarifying question. Did you have a comment you wanted to make as well at this point? Okay. Anybody online? The room is silent. Okay. <laughs> yeah, come on up to the mic just so the online folks can hear you. That's right. I'm Caroline Scribner. I've been around for a long time. I've had dogs like my whole adult life, and I'm an avid user of the park. In fact, you know, they all recognize each other. But I, in the beginning, it was, you know, have been pretty like, no, we don't need to do this. We voted, the town voted. We settled this years ago. The number, I think, of issues is relatively small. There's a North Branch, but I understand that we have to make the compromise and it's going to happen. And so I'm trying to put, you know, my big girl pants on and I realize, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. And I feel like, you're giving us the north side of it is is great because there's more trails, there's more space. And I was worried at the beginning that there wouldn't really be any good access. And then I saw that you're gonna main, you know, improve the hemlock trail, which I was like, that's great. There are things that are gonna be done that are really helpful. So I'm in favor of that. And you guys did a good job with that. I do think though, as you pointed out, that there needs to be some off-leash for the core, because some people just won't be able to use the park anymore. And that's just not fair. And I do think that your 11 o'clock time is good. I was hoping for like afternoon, but I'm not gonna fight that one. That's a battle I've lost again, but that's all right. I think that morning needs to be opened up. You're gonna have signs there anyway, stating it quite clearly, you know, dogs, it, it, you know, either on leash all the time or it can be clear. It's not, that's not, you know, it's not confusing. Dogs on leash from whenever till the park closes. So that's my two cents. Thank you. And there are a few people online. Um, and I see Juan. Um, I see a yes. I, were you interested in, I'm assuming? Juan, you want to go ahead? Great. Is one there? I uh, actually didn't um, say yes to speaking, but I will speak uh, anyways, if people can hear me. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I guess for me, I find the core area to be a great place for dogs to really socialize with other people and especially practice being off leash there's a nice density of people who are there um that you don't really get in the northern area um and seeing the limitations on time in the core area is really disheartening because then it's harder to really get training time with your dog with other people and other dogs um so i'm i'm pretty against the idea of limiting the off-leash time uh, in the core zone um, because like if the goal is to have like better harmony between dogs and people I, I don't think limiting that contact is going to be the solution thanks Juan um, I do see um, Dan Jones hi um Couple of things. One on the uh, north section, uh, I walked through there this morning just to see what the uh, options were. Without the AmeriCorps, um, uh, it, perhaps people haven't noticed, but there's a lot of deadfall consistently that is not cleared on the paths. So for us older folks, uh, walking in that zone with our dogs is more of a obstacle course than it is a walk. 
So I'm uh, sorry that that seems to be the limiting a limiting factor for uh, what what is possible within the park. Um, you know, if you can keep it going until uh, open it up till eleven in what your so called main section, that will help some. Since most people I know take their walk dogs for a walk somewhere between nine and uh, eight and eleven, um, but. I, I do feel that uh, given the inability for the uh, Parks Department without the AmeriCorps to take care of the uh, the rest of the trails, uh, you're creating a problem for a lot of us. Thanks, Dan. And I see David Dobbs. Sorry, I had to uh, get, can you hear me now? <laughs> Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, I am happy to see the proposal you put forth. Um, um, I don't, you know, they, we're not going to get a uh, perfect solution. Uh, this is easily, the, the important thing about it is as you, just at the um, David, you are breaking up quite a bit. I think it's it's valuable partly because it it is one of the few things that um, uh, proposals that fully respect the right of everybody in town to feel safe going to the park at any time. Um, I think anything that uh, compromises that is uh, far not ideal. I would I'd rather have your first option um, without uh, morning hours to be the case, or if that is seen to be necessary, perhaps do it every other day. Um, there are also people who like to go up the, to the park in the morning and would like to walk uh, in, in the south, in the core of the park without encountering loose dogs for a number of reasons. Um, and uh, so I hope you can lean that way. I know you will get a lot of pleas tonight to do otherwise, but um, uh, there's there's plenty of reasons to um, make keep this thing simple. And I should say uh, a few weeks ago when I wrote Dawn French Port, Front Ports Forum to correct some errors um, made by one of the park advocates. Um, I, I got several emails from people in the community who stressed how uh, painful it has been for them to not feel safe in the park. They don't go there anymore uh, because of the, the dog's lease, uh, off leash all the time. And uh, one person said that uh, they knew someone who was excited about the accessible trail because they're not sure-footed, but they found they did not feel safe there because of the uh, dogs off leash. So you might want to consider that um, in any uh, before you you know decide to make that trail accessible to off leash dogs. Um, people who own them. I, I know that's a sticky wicket, but um, something to be considered. Thanks a lot. Uh, I won't take any more time. I appreciate everyone that's worked on this and uh, thrown in their two cents and hopefully we can have a thing that works for good. Thanks, David. And I see Gwen with their hand up. And after we, I think Gwen's getting their sound on, but after we hear from Gwen, um, I'm gonna shift to the room for um, if it, just to, so you all know, and then we'll come back to online again. Gwen. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I'm just interested if you could please clarify how the Northern zone of the park is accessed um, aside from walking through the entire core zone um how do you get to the uh, how do you get to the northern zone is it roads that are like connected off of elm street or 
Um, yeah, if you could clarify that for me, I would appreciate it. I think I just really haven't been there before. Thank you. Take this okay perfect. um so there'll be two parking areas that have basically direct access to the off-leash zone the parking area at the new shelter and then the parking area at what is sometimes now referred to as the dog field um so you get out of your car with your dog on a leash you walk i don't know 50 feet or so and unleash your dog once you get to the off-leash zone um other access points are hubbard park drive um, you would just turn left and be within the off-leash zone with about, in about 0 0.1 miles. Um, and then there's also North Park Drive, which would have direct access to the off-leash zone. I haven't gone to any, but I just happened to look and I'm like, oh, it's right now. Which I would have gone. Yeah. So uh, I, I think there's oh. some background noise. Yeah, and Stephanie's answering your question right now. So just hold on a second. Stephanie, go ahead. Okay. Oh, um, and then I'm, did I miss any of the access points? And then, um, oh, the new one off of Wyndham Drive mm -hmm. that'll be established this summer will be directly to the off-leash zone as well. So I raised. And then also on the far north by the um, Central Vermont Community College and also um, North Branch Nature Center parking is for North Branch Nature Center, but if you were, you know, making a loop or something like that, you could go from Elm Street by the stump dump and into the park that way. Yes, and from the the park entrances that are near like the Winter Street access point, it's about 0 0.7 miles to the off-leash zone. So it's about, you know, an 8 to 10 minute walk, depending on how fast you can walk to get to the off leash. I just I just want to follow that up. So um most of those responses assumed that the park user has a car. Um if if we don't have a car, um what what do you suggest? Well there are neighborhoods all along um the Hubbard Park Drive that would access it without a car. Anyone who lives along the northern So I need to walk yeah, to Hubbard Park Drive. Not have to have a car to access. Um, and it's also about a 10 minute walk from any of the other park entrances to reach the off leash zone. So for some people that might mean car access, for others they'll be able to walk it. Okay. I don't I don't feel that that's reasonably accessible to walk to personally. Thank you. Thanks, Gwen. And let's see, I said I was going to turn to the room here and just check in to see if anybody here wanted to add comments. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Simone. Uh, do I need to like lower this a little? Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Um, I grew up on North Street and uh, I recently moved back uh, a couple of years ago, and I, I come to Hubbard Park at, at least once a week with my dog. And uh, I just want to say, you know, it's been an amazing space to build community. Um, you know, people with dogs there have been super friendly. They come come up because you know our dogs want to meet each other, and everyone's been super respectful. Generally, like calls ahead and says, you know, is it okay if my dog approaches? And uh, you know, generally speaking, we always check in and make sure it's good. And it's just been such a great way to come back into the community and get to meet everyone again. And I just really hope that we're able to move forward with that sentiment and to not have like a really fractured community between people with dogs and without dogs and that we really maintain a strong, cohesive community moving forward in whatever way possible, because you know, it's one of the reasons that I moved back was that there's a really strong community here. And it's been one of the best parts about moving back is, you know, re-meeting everyone. And the people with dogs have honestly been, you know, the most uh, interactive with me uh, and my husband and our dog. And it's been one of like the highlights of my weeks is going there. And uh, I just think it's such an asset to the community here and to building that. And uh, I also want to just bring up uh, a point that I haven't heard talked about uh, I go there for you know like an hour to two hours every week 
at least. And I always run into at least two other people from far away parts in Vermont, like not close, like Randolph, Warren, Burlington. And some of these places have dog parks much nearer to them. Uh, but these people are choosing to come to the area because they don't have a Hubbard Park and they go to restaurants, they go to small shops. And I just want to, you know, take a second to make sure that we're looking at the economic impact as well on small businesses. Uh, I don't know if that's been looked into, uh, but I think that with like the floods, especially having that extra, um, you know, boon to the economy is really helpful. Thanks, Mom. Let's go back online again. I see Peggy's hand up. Okay. Um, can you guys see me? Yes. yes. Me? Okay. Hi. So um, I just found out about this meeting. I'm actually at the golf course with my dog. Um, basically because the past month or so in Hubbard Park hasn't been pleasant, which is heartbreaking because... I go to the park every day, twice a day for the past 10 years. Um, some of the people I walk with, uh, I walk with an 85 year old. Um, I don't know if any of you have read Willem Lang's uh, commentary in the Times Argus, but that's heartbreaking too. Um, I echo Simone's comments about the kindness and openness and welcomeness of the people that I know and see every single day. And it just is, again, th there's a heartbreak in the, in the fact that I feel like a group of people who are an asset to Montpelier are being maligned. The, um, we're there, rain or shine, when it's five below or 95 degrees. And um, Dan Jones, thank you for bringing up the fact that the proposed path is definitely unwalkable for people who are over the age of like, you know, at a certain, who have mobility issues. And my, my last comment is um, my disappointment at the data, the way the data was collected, um, because I'm not on Front Porch Forum, and a lot of people that I walk with in the park daily are not on Front Porch Forum either. Um, I'm a former special educator, and when there's a behavioral problem, I would meet the person and observe. And I, I, the data was, seems to have been collected by a very, in a, a very like finite way. In, and um, it just, it's just really sad that it's come to this. Um, I've had people in the last month, you know, really be mean to me. And I'm not a mean person. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sorry. I just needed to stand up for the people who are there, who are very kind and welcoming, and I think are stewards of the park, and and welcoming to visitors. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Peggy. Um, another person online, although I don't see any hands up, and then we can shift back to the room again. Anybody online? All right, coming back into the room. All right, go ahead, Brian. Brian Pfeiffer, I've lived in the town for the better part of 40 years. I am um, a former Parks Commission chairman. And um, first time I, like I said, the first time I was here, and I'm really going to limit my comments for a minute or two since I've already testified. And if you've seen my letter, it pretty much says it all. My only addition is that, you know, my sense was that the zoned approach was the compromise and that adding time based exceptions to the core sort of, I think, in some ways undermines your fundamental goal for the core which is really to give people assurances that they can be there without, uh, with all dogs on leash. And, you know, like I would love to see uh, leash limitations in the Northern section, for example. Um, and frankly, 
the compromise zone proposal is not my own ideal proposal, but I've talked to a lot of people about this over the course of the past month, and I've given up on a lot of my own aspirations for more restrictive leashing in the park. Um, so I see the zone, clean zones, easy for the commission to enforce and the staff to enforce as really the best compromise. And let's, if access is a problem, let's make access on the northern portion better. Or let's try to offer a little bit of better access in the core. But I think that by um, especially 10 o'clock, like basically what you're doing is creating only an on-leash exception for a small portion of the day. And I think that the sort of clear, pure zones um, support your aspirations for the most potential people. The park is first and foremost a place for people. And I think the zones do that. They allow that. Okay. Thanks, Brian. All right, let's go online again. And see. I'm not seeing anyone else online or in the room. But I do want to pause in case anybody wants to speak up. Yeah. I, agree. I, I, I really like the idea of the zoning and it being really clean and clear, but um, I feel a lot safer walking on the path to the tower <clears throat> when it's really, really icy. I don't know. I don't know how I'd handle it. Um, and having an access in the morning would be really helpful. And when I'm there in the morning, most of the people in this, most of the people there are walking their dogs <laughs> off leash. So I figured people with the the people I'm most anxious about now when I'm walking my dogs are the families with little kids. And I, I'm assuming that they would come to the park later. Um, they're not going to take a, a, a morning walk at nine o'clock in the morning. So I'm, I'm hoping that there will be some access on the on the safer paths for people like me thanks thank you and um do you mind reminding us of your name as well eliza eliza thomas thank you oh thank you uh colleen hi can you hear me yes okay um I I really like the in general the the idea of the zone due to its simplicity like having the two zones but like everyone hopefully we evolve and you know hearing from different people and different aged people about some of the um challenges with the um the north portion of the park um you know I I think it is a good idea to have a little more flexibility in that approach um and and I've said for years, I mean, this is kind of incidental, but I think we should promote that the park is off leash. I mean, there are off leash beaches in Maine and California, Wisconsin. Um, you can generate interest and funding and all kinds of things with that. But um, but at any rate, so I agree with Peggy and the other woman who were talking about how this is a unique feature. And it's something that could be promoted and um, result in another funding stream, et cetera. Um, but that said, I do like the idea of there being a little more flexibility with the two zones. That's all. Thank you. And thanks for all the work everyone has done. Thanks, Colleen. Am I missing anybody else on here? Uh, we have two more hands raised. Oh, thank you. Can I raise my hand? Um, and I think Gwen already spoke. For, so let's go to the um, iPad. Hi, this is Rachel Stevens. I can't change my name. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to 
put in a comment of the two proposals on the table, I think for today, um, I would encourage the commission to consider allowing flexibility in the morning, um, consistent with what the dog committee recommended. Um, I don't think that 10 a.m. is responsive. And if I recall, that was a random number <laughs> that commissioners pulled out of a hat at the last meeting. Um, and it wasn't actually based on how people who have dogs actually use the park. And so I would recommend the least restrictive option that's on the table today, which would be 10 a.m. But I would also encourage the commission to actually consider the feedback that they've heard from many, many people that have asked for more flexibility in the core zone. Um, and also that they've heard from their own dog committee to allow either more time in the morning to be more equitable or to allow an option in the afternoon to make the time more equitable. And I just wanna remind everybody that the status quo right now is that dogs are allowed off leash in Hubbard Park. And that is consistent with the city ordinance and that's consistent with how the park has been managed up until today. And so whatever we consider, we all recognize that things need to change because we wanna be inclusive and we want people that are currently avoiding the park because of off-leash dogs to be able to access the park. So I think we've already accepted that premise and I would just encourage the commission to really listen to what people are saying um, and to be flexible and to challenge your assumptions because a lot of what I'm seeing in the chat and a lot of what I've heard from commissioners at previous meetings is based on a lot of assumptions and personal opinions and not actually based on what people from the public who are here today and who have been at all of these meetings and have been emailing you have been saying. So I just want to encourage the commission to listen to what people are saying, challenge your own personal bias and your own assumptions, and to really listen and see if we can get a compromise that people can get on board with. I also would encourage the commission to delay a vote. I don't think that you need to rush the decision today, and I think there's a lot of really good reasons why you should consider waiting and considering more comment before you make a final and drastic decision. That's all. Thanks, Rachel. Oh, come on. Gwen? Um, Gwen, I see you have your hand raised. Hi, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a point about, um, I, I think you had cited some data, maybe sort of informally collected um, among people who walk there in the morning. And I, I know because I usually don't walk in the morning. Um, if my dog and I go to the park, we go in the middle of the day. Um, I know that there are dog walkers there. I feel like some important data to collect um, would be to speak with the people, if you're gonna go to the park and canvas people, to go to the park at more times of day and ask those people if they are able to walk in the mornings. Um, because otherwise you're just kind of asking people who walk in the morning if they can walk in the morning. Um, and I also would um, sort of piggyback off of what Rachel just said um, in terms of maybe delaying a vote. Uh, I still would really hope for some traction in with an alternate day plan. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why zones are considered clearer to people than alternate day. To me, alternate day is much more clear. Um, and more than anything, I'm just concerned that a plan that's not really equitable is gonna be bad for town morale, really. We've, we've all been through so much in the last few years between the pandemic and floods and so on, um, and struggling businesses and the issues at the co-op. Um, and I just really think that, uh, you know, keeping Hubbard Park equitable is is really important right now and also again thank you everyone for all of your work on this that's all thanks Gwen. all right danis i can't can you hear me yes we can okay i can't i couldn't get on to the little hand anyhow i i completely agree with the last speaker um and um I feel that um, it would be important to relook at what your plan is. And you've had this plan in the works for some years. Um, but 
always to use the north zone, but yet, you know, you haven't really um, made any improvements to that area. So I think um, that and that, uh, you know, you've also admitted to, you know, weighing the surveys that you're basing all of these, all of your proposals upon. And um, I think that I agree that this is going to be a big division within the community. And I think it really is up to you guys to, you know, uh, look at this again and figure out something. There's no reason to rush this, um, uh, you know, for the, apparently the reason is for the spring and summer, you know, group of people who will, you know, override the, override the park. Um, it's, uh, this has been going on for so many years and there, there just is not, nobody has given the data that this is based on. And I think that's important. In the meantime, my, my response to uh, the, um, the timing, uh, the time zones is to also think about when do people really use the park um, and, and who are you, you know, you're, you're you're thinking that okay, so the dogs can be off leash in the in the core zone up until when 10, 11 o'clock, uh, and then and then what happens after that? You know, I mean, people really don't come to the there's not, there's nobody in the park in the midday usually, and people with dogs rarely come to you know or with off leash dogs come on weekends. I mean, there are a lot of people in the spring and summer to avoid all of that. Um, and, you know, school kids, what school kids come with in a group with their teacher. Uh, and otherwise, you know, the kids don't really like walking on paths. They don't they don't want to do that. They want a playground. And that's what that's something that the Parks Committee should really be, be working on is a playground for kids because there aren't enough playgrounds in Montpelier. And there's also the economics, the economics of this too, um, and it, 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 there just seems to be a kind of a an authoritarian, you know, uh, uh, kind of a, a smell to all of this, you know, and with policing, you know, having police in the parks and people coming to, you know, uh, it, Janice, it's it's been two minutes. Just want to. <sighs> Thank you. Go ahead. I mean, if you have one last comment, yeah. Janice, go ahead. Right. With the policing, you know, having, bringing the police into the park, um, when in the last seven years, there has been, you know, no, you have not reached out to uh, enforce uh, the the code of conduct and the, and the police's, you know, asking the police to, um, investigate certain incidents, and as I said before, you know, in ten in in the last five years, there have been twelve incidents that have reported been reported to the police and not investigated. And it, you just have to be a lot more careful because the stakes are very high. Okay. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Dennis. Is there those of you paying attention to the chat? Am I missing anybody online? I'm going to turn back to the room. I'm hearing no further public comment. Um, I'm going to shift from public comment to discussion amongst commissioners, dog committee staff. Okay. Um, let me just write this here. Okay, um, thank you so much to everybody who spoke up. I know um, it's not easy to speak up on these types of meetings. And I know this is a um, not an easy conversation and a lot of emotions tied up into everything. And um, just really appreciate everybody's, um, everybody tonight, our emails, conversations, everybody who's been part of this has been really helpful and um, want to thank everybody for for being part of this. Um, I want to shift to those of us who are at this very big, enormous, important <laughs> kind of spilling um, large space here. Um, 
And um, I'd love to start by maybe just um, turning to any of us up here. We we can popcorn. We don't have to go in order, um, but would love to hear any initial um, response, comments, um, thoughts from you all as um, you've been here listening. Um, I, just, I just realized that we never like went up to the pros and cons table for people in the room. I shared the link with people online, but... I don't know if we want to do that. Um, do you want to scroll? You're the ones sharing. I know, I know. I, I just down. like never, because yeah, I felt like yeah. everyone in here has it. Awesome. Great. Never mind. I can say something if no one else wants to go. Kick um, off, Emily. I don't know about you guys, but I've been like losing sleep over this issue. And my husband pointed out that it's over dogs. <laughs> so um, it also, it feels ridiculous. And then it also feels very important. Um, so uh, I've been thinking a lot about the Parks Commission mission, which is enjoyment and enjoyment requires feeling safe and comfortable, which I think we are trying to address with the zones and creating some space in the park where anybody can come and feel safe and comfortable. Um, I also think enjoyment means people enjoying the park as they would prefer. And we all agree that the core zone is like the gem of Montpelier. And to say that People who walk their dogs on leash can, can will all be able to go there between eight and ten, or whenever um, small amount of time or no time. Um, to me, doesn't feel terribly fair in terms of their enjoyment of the park, if that's how they enjoy the park. Um, and I think another really important piece of the safe and comfortably enjoying the park is that people do need to feel that it's fair. The vast or a large majority of the people who currently use the park, as we just heard, are just a lot of people who go there in the morning are dog walkers. And you could say that that's because the park has become a dog park and um, we're trying to kind of make it less of a dog park, more open to everyone. But I also think that um, that means taking away something from a lot of people that currently really value the park and which is not only very sad, but is going to feel very unjust to a lot of people. And, um, that could lead people to break the rules. People break the rules in North branch, um, as has been talked about already and, I think if I was not visiting the park because I didn't want to encounter off-leash dogs, that wouldn't make me feel comfortable. So, Thanks, Emily. And this is open to every everybody, not just the commissioners. I guess one thing I'll, I'll chime in, Jessa, with the dog committee. I'll, I'll say I really appreciate, Emily, thank you for taking the time to put all these pros and cons down. This has been really helpful actually for me to think about it. And um, I really appreciate the Park Commission being open to at least a time component, because I do think there are a lot of, I don't need to repeat all of your sort of pros and cons on this document, but I, I think if the Park Commission, or at least if a majority of the Park Commission is open to considering that possibility, I would encourage as late as possible on that that bar because I think, for example, the 8 a.m. option, I don't think actually solves the pros and cons of that list. So if that's like an option at all, I think it, you know, it needs to actually be a realistically accessible option or it won't feel it will feel um like a not real compromise. Somebody in the chat just asked if it was to identify themselves. I just wrote him who we are. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Lincoln Frasca. And 
Yeah, I guess I just want to start off by reflecting on the the goal in the Hubbard Park Management Plan that brought us to today, which was to modify dog policies and amenities to make people feel safer and more welcome. Going over the pros and cons list and from last week's meeting, um, I can't I can't you know think about anything else except really the pro that tells us that any visitor is able to access the park at any time whenever they want if we do the core zone geographic split without a time overlay option. I think this is the option that has the most likely potential to avoid future conflicts, to avoid future incidents, and to solve the safety gap in the park right now, as well as to bring new users to the park. I think it's gonna be simple, and I think it's gonna be something that the park staff has told us they can implement, and it's gonna be easy, whether people like it or not, to obey. I th also think it has the most staying power and potentially be the, a long-lasting solution that avoids this topic coming up again. I think it also has the potential to maintain the off-leash dog community in Hubbard Park in the northern section because this issue of having a pot potential dog bite or an incident that has come to our attention and brought this is issue so forefront for the city would be significantly reduced and therefore maintaining the, that community of off-leash dog walkers and protecting them from, from future restriction. I think lastly, I, I want to say that the the solution of of just the two splits without any time alternative was the one option at our meeting last week that there was support for on park staff side, on the dog committee side, as well as the parks, as well as the parks commission. And I think that was a big takeaway from for me is that this has support from everybody here that's sitting um, in the chairs. And I really want to do something that is going to bring bring new people in, protect the community, and also make sure that we're keeping the off-leash community alive in a way that's safe and makes sense and is long-term. Thanks, Lincoln. This is the Andrew, Andrew Brewer. <clears throat> I've spent, um, Boy, a lot of time this past week, um, as the flood of emails is coming in, and I, I'll speak for myself, I read every single word, so everybody listening, every single email, um, <clears throat> I spent a lot of time thinking about um, the north section. And I actually went up there over the weekend to, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time up there. I'm walking around up there. I, I used, I know every inch of it, but I went up there specifically through the lens of trying to see how it is to spend time up there, maybe as an elderly person or somebody, you know, with, with or without a dog on leash. Um, and I realized that in a lot of the comments, this, it felt to me like there was this uh, uh, idea creeping in that the North part was worthless. It wasn't going to help at all. And if you have a dog, it's, it's just not useful to us. And I didn't get that. You know, I, if you go from the new shelter, you walk past the gate, you're on the seven fireplaces road, nice and wide and flat. You get up to seven fireplaces. There are trails around there um, that are, you know, I thought equal to some of the trails that are that are in the core zone. Um, it doesn't have a new accessible trail, for sure, um, like we have in the core zone. But I really struggle with that idea that you know, I, I saw a lot of the comments and I kind of boiled down to, unless I can use the exact trail I want when I want, everything else is worthless to me and you're destroying my experience in the park. Um, so I, I'm really struggling with that whole idea of, of the north part of the park. Um, I want to address um, the survey. Um, I think it was, we got a couple emails on it and I think somebody mentioned it tonight. Um, I was the one who was speaking with, um, a person who visited last week and, uh, I don't feel like I admitted that there was bias on the survey, even if my words were that. <laughs> what I mean is what I meant to say to clarify was 
the question before us, we, we put out this survey to gather information for the dog committee to bring recommendations back to the park commission. And the question was not, shall we make changes? That was not the question at all. That decision was made over a year ago. The question before the dog committee was where and when. And so that was how why the survey was designed the way it was. If you if you thought the, the survey should have been that question, I can understand how it seemed biased towards, you know, dogs being on leash. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that that was that was not the intent of the survey that we put out. Um, um, so with that in mind, I'm not, you know, I think a lot about equity. I think a lot about that. I still push back. And, and I know we talk a lot about data. Um, Input in emails and communication is data. You know, we take all of that in, and we've all been doing that for well over a year now through multiple surveys. Um, the survey that was put out gets referenced often in 2017. I think Caroline referenced it earlier. Um, it wasn't a binding vote. It was a weird question that got stuck on the ballot. Let's see what kind of response we get. Um, but it wasn't, it was never intended to be any kind of a binding, you know, okay. 50, whatever, 52% said, don't change a thing. So that was it. Um, um, and maybe it's got us all thinking about it since then, um, since that since that question came out. I, um, and I think, I think about what if we miraculously had another 200 acres right over here, clear and pristine, and we're going to make it a park. I doubt very much from day one, we'd say number one thing on the list is dogs are off leash. I don't think that's the way we would do it. And I understand that it's been that way for a long, long, long time. And people have gotten used to their patterns. Um, and I can certainly understand how any change is going to feel like a taking. Um, and you're going to, you know, maybe there has to be a, I think somebody referenced one of our first meetings, um, um, shared inequity or something like that. And, and I, I, you know, I, at the time I got it, I understood it, but I, I'd rather flip it and say, no, we can, can't we have some shared equity instead? Um, so um, I, I agree that the, you know, I, I am also looking for simplicity. Um, I, I, I would, well, I hate to throw another monkey wrench in, but I would, I would look at other parts in the core that can be off leash all the time. Um, I am concerned about the hours. I'm concerned about the, you know, the complication of the hours. Um, but so I'm not, I'm not spilling my beans here. I really haven't made up my mind where I'm going with this, but I'm just kind of giving my thoughts of where I am at the point at this moment. Thanks, Andrew. Diana. Hi, Diana Green uh, on the dog subcommittee. I wanted to ask the Parks Commission. Um, some of the justification for you either making the core exclusively not leashed, or excuse me, the core exclusively on leash or mostly on leash versus having on leash be in the northern section and off leash exclusively in the core. You understand my question? If you wouldn't mind responding to that. Uh, yeah, I actually, I respond a little bit in the chat. Someone had a similar question. Um, and we did talk about during our last week's meeting, flipping the zones. Um, a few issues came up when we talked about that. The first is that all of the roads are in the core part of the park and all of the roads require leashing. So anytime someone was crossing a road or wanted to walk on a road, they'd have to leash their dog. So that would kind of fragment the off-leash experience a lot if you have to leash and unleash your dog multiple times each time you're at a road intersection or each time you come across a shelter where leashing is also required, or every time you come across a parking area where leashing is also required. Um, we also 
initially when we were talking about um, the dog committee's recommendation for hours every single day, um, we had mentioned that, you know, if you're requiring leashing in the quieter parks of the park in the northern zone, you could be setting yourself up for a culture of noncompliance. If you're not coming across anybody on your whole walk, why would you leash your dog? Um, so that was one of the reasons we felt the core zone was better for the leash requirement. And also the core zone is just the busiest part of the park uh, where it has terrain that's accessible for not just elders, but also toddlers, people who feel unstable. Um, and that applies to people who have a dog or don't have a dog. We heard from a lot of elders that also do not go to the park for fear of being knocked over by an off-leash dog. Um, so we felt that the core zone, by making that an on-leash area, we would be minimizing the options for people to have negative interactions with dogs, just because that's the busiest area with the most trail crossings, with all of the on-leash required areas already. Does that clarify? Thank you. I would like to hear from other members of the Parks Commission in regard to why you signed on to the core being primarily, if not exclusively, on leash. I'd be glad to speak to that. I think, um, you know, what we're solving here is a social problem, not a, and it's not an ecological problem. It's people and people, people and dogs and any kind of social problem anywhere. The more people you have in a space, the more apparent the problem is the, and so it makes sense when, you know, looking at the core area of the park, um, to that's a space that warrants that, you know, having, having dogs on leash will reduce the conflict in that core area. I also, um, I also think that it's such an iconic part of our community. And to me, the first time that I kind of realized that, that our parks might be keeping people, dogs might be keeping people out of the park, um, I forget if it was a public meeting we were having or a survey. I forget what it was, but there was something where we were as a commission trying to figure out, hey, let's figure out how to manage our parks. We're just taking public input. And I went around to friends and neighbors and said, hey, the Parks Commission is doing this awesome thing. We want to hear from the community. Take this survey. We want to hear from you. And I remember reaching out to um, a family and said, hey, take this survey. Aren't our parks amazing? Don't you want to chime in? really excited about this opportunity. And the family said, oh, we, we don't go to the park. I w why would I take that survey? I don't go there. And I said, what do you mean you don't go to the park? And they said, oh, my kid is afraid of dogs, so we can't go there. We tried going when they were small and, and we've tried a few times. We tried to make it work out, but it's just too much. And I thought, what an incredible thing that somebody could grow up in this community and never go to the Hubbard Tower and never see that view. Really? That's something every child, every person in this community should have as part of their experience in this town. And that wasn't part of like, let's change something or we need, you know, it was just talking to people in the community and it stuck with me because I was surprised. I assumed that every kid in town goes there. And that was just one thing. But through surveys, through conversations, without even asking, hey, what do you think of dogs? What should we do here? Should it be leashes? People just surface it quietly. And it's not necessarily at public meetings. It's in emails. It's in one-on-one -on -one co conversations. And it seemed clear to me, and I think for all of us as commissioners, because we've been listening really hard for a long time, that there are people who are not coming to our parks. And that core area, that experience in that core area seems like it, that that's central to solving that piece of the puzzle. And having dogs on leash there whether it's all the time, most of the time, seems 
a, like a really important part of the puzzle to make sure that at the least that iconic place in our town, I can turn to this family and say, it's your park. You can go there now. You can have that experience as part of your childhood here. And I, that to me is, I think, important. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, just, just Dan, Dan I'll, I'll, I'll add that, you know, probably for the same reason that we, have, you know, the original proposal was the tower trail and the accessible trail, um, because they are the most popular sections of the park. And so, you know, I think it came down to, uh, let me see if I get this right, you know, uh, where, where are you going to err if you, if you say, um, poor off leash all the time, then you're saying to the people who don't want to encounter dogs, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to encounter dogs. If you, if you come to, if you, if you use the core section, um, versus saying to folks, if the other way, when, you know, the way that's proposed, um, when you come to, if you're going to use the core with your dog, your dog has to be on leash, which is a benefit to the folks who don't want to run into dogs. So it's, yeah, it, it, it you know, understanding that it is, that that is the more popular section of the, of the park. It's kind of a, kind of a balancing act and, and, you know, trying to do, huh, trying to do the least harm, really trying to do the least harm uh, to all parties. I don't know if that helps. I believe that having the north section always off leash is not an equitable compromise that the core being always on leash is not giving a large demographic of people who look forward to having off-leash dogs in the core and meeting others as a, a social opportunity. To deny those people of that is not equitable. And Andrew, you spoke about trying to be equitable. Yeah. Yeah. This is Lincoln. I, I just want to say something I've been thinking about is the need to restrict use to increase access. So as we're not limiting access for anybody with our proposed options, but we are restricting use for everybody. And right now we have not access for anybody who doesn't feel comfortable around off-leash dogs anywhere in Hubbard Park. So we're talking about just restricting a use. Anybody is still able to go to any part of the park. Sorry, anybody with a dog off-leash who now goes off-leash can still go to any part of the park, but they will have to leash in the core all the time, most of the time. But that's, that's allowing other people to be there with them. So that that is what I'm that's what I keep coming back to. And I mean, as it is now, in the canine code of conduct, you have to have a leash and you have to be prepared and responsible and able to leash your dog at any point in the park or during your walk. I think that's something that has been undermined in the park and has led us to where we are now. And I think even in the northern section, I want people to feel comfortable who who are taking a longer walk and want to go, you know, from an off leash, from an on leash space into an off leash space. And I want them to know that, yeah, people do have leashes. They are under voice control and they are going to leash, leash the dog. If, if the dog is, you know, need, needs to be leashed or if a person is, says that they're uncomfortable. So I think we are trying to redefine the culture in Hubbard park 
and it does mean restricting access, restricting use to increase access, and it is definitely a compromise, but I absolutely think we're going to see new users in the park, and I I do hope at when, by focusing on developing the northern portion and making those spaces more, ac more accessible for everybody, that although all change is going to be challenging, that long term, this is going to be something that everybody can find their use in there in Hubbard Park any time of the day, and will everybody will benefit because of that. One final thing. As you said, redefining the culture of the park, we're leaving behind elderly people, people with mobility issues. Are those the people that we're trying to unredefine the park? Currently, people who are elderly or with mobility issues that do not feel comfortable around off-leash dogs have nowhere to go in the park. So by having a core zone where those people can go, we are creating more access to those demographics as well. This is Alec Ellsworth, the parks director. Um, I wanted to offer uh, kind of like a framing um, perspective because it's easy to get lost in all of the different proposals, the specific people that are impacted. Um, and one thing I appreci appreciate about this commission, um, and you've all been commissioners since before I became the parks director, um, is that you decided to put an end to the ad hoc dealing with every single issue that comes up in our park. So we're not going to decide about a mountain bike trail. We're not going to decide about dogs in a vacuum. We're not going to decide about this, that, or the other thing. We're going to go through a comprehensive process to have an actual management plan for these parcels. We're going to look at the ecological value. We're going to hear from the community about what they want. Um, and I think we're, we're in the throes of that through this process um, because we've inherited so many things from the past that were just dealt with ad hoc and not dealt with, not, not thought through in a comprehensive way. Um, and so, you know, thinking about like when you're managing people in a park, in a park system, I appreciate what Brian said, like parks are for people. Like we wouldn't have a park if it wasn't for people. It'd be much better for this area to have no people at all <laughs> if we're just thinking about what's best for the land. So our core user is people and then managing, of course, you want to manage the conflict between the land and the people. And then on top of that, you have people that like to do certain activities. So um, people who like to walk their dog off leash, people who like to mountain bike, people who like to ride horses. These are all really great activities. They're, they're very healthy. Um, they promote social groups. They promote a sense of community. I think we can all agree that we want to promote these things in our park and also they create a user conflict and a user conflict is really at the core of what this issue is. Um, and it's just so easy to get lost in the, in the personal details of it, but you have an activity that people like to do walking dogs off leash. It's a wonderful activity and we should promote it. And I think it's very clear to everybody that it has an impact on other users. And so when we're looking at that second slice of people, well, before I'll say that, you know, there's a third slice of people that's like activities that might be great, but maybe not welcome in our parks, like dirt biking or smoking, you know, well, smoke is not great, but like certain people have fun dirt biking, but like we've decided, nah, that's has too high an impact on, you know, the community. We don't want people dirt biking in our park. They used to do that, but they don't do that anymore. So when you're looking at that kind of in-between group of like, these are activities that we want to promote, but they do have an impact on other users. 
you know, over working with me as a director for the past four years, I think you, you know, hopefully you've seen that to me, one of the you know, most, one of my prime values is accessibility. And so I, I want to see more people using our park. If we're going to have a trail, I'd like to be, have it be more accessible or, you know, universally accessible. If we're going to have mountain bikes, I like, I like it to be available to kids. I like to connect neighborhoods. I like it to be available to older people, older adults, people who want to move throughout the city, not just activities for that small slice of the population that is able-bodied and has leisure time and is, you know, able to use these parks when they want. I'm glad those people can use the parks, but I, I want to see more people using the park. So, um, you know, for me, the question has become sort of distilled down to, okay, we have an activity here. It's a great activity. We want to promote it. It's having an, it's having an impact on other users. And accessibility is an issue. So, and, and we've, we've been batting this around this accessibility piece. And I think Diane, I appreciate you bringing this up and pushing it because it's certainly resonating with me too. Um, and for me, I feel like where, where, you know, accessibility could be handled in, you know, what's being proposed is making hours, um, so that people can access those, you know, more accessible parts of the park, or we can make the trails, you know, more accessible in the Northern section. And I think, you know, there's clearly a solution. There's clearly a way to do it. And just from a framing perspective, like it's so easy to be like, Oh, you're, you're taking away, you're taking something away or you're being banned from this area or whatever. But at its core, you know, this is a user conflict. We want to promote this use and let's make it as accessible as possible. And that, you know, that last question is sort of like where I'm, you know, where I'm, what I'm grappling with. I, I hear other people grappling with it too. Um, sorry for being so long winded, but I just wanted to like provide kind of like a management, like hierarchy of needs for, for users of our park. Um, Cause it's so easy to get lost in all the, in all the specifics of the, of the proposals. Dana. These microphones is the right one. Maybe I'll try this if I can get your bubbled Brahmin. I'm in the awkward in between spot with my knee in a trash can. Okay. Um, I just want to speak a little bit to the experience of being a dog owner in Montpelier. So I was that kid who begged their parents for a dog and I grew up out in the country, beg, beg, beg. Can I please have a dog? Finally got a dog when I was 14. That was a farm dog. We live like leashes. What is that? Um, I rambled the woods with my dog. It was like my dream life. Um, we moved to Montpelier in my late teens and I was a pretty bad city dog owner. Like I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to manage a dog in the city. The dog was not getting the exercise she should get. Um, and we ended up rehoming her when I was in my early twenties. Um, I always wanted another dog. I didn't know that I, if I could be a good dog owner or not, I had this experience of like not taking good care of a dog. So I thought a lot about what it means to be a dog owner in town. Um, and it's really different than being a dog owner on a farm. Like you sign up for, you have to respect the other people. You live in a neighborhood, you live around people. Um, and I was really clear adopting a dog that I was going to work really hard to make sure that she was really respectful around people and that other people came first. Like that's what I was signing up for living in Montpelier. Um, and that meant that I taught her to walk on a leash. Like it was really important for me to do leash work. I'm like, some of my exercise with this dog is going to be on sidewalks. Like that's just true. I live in a town. So I just want to, and like my dog loves running off leash in Hubbard Park. She loves zooming. Like it's really important for dogs to have off, off leash time also, but I'm really clear as a dog owner that my dog's needs don't come before the other people in my community's needs. And that's just part of signing up to have a dog in town. So I just want to lift that up as like a distinction. And I think in Vermont, it can be tricky because we are such a rural state, but the owning a dog in a rural setting is really different than owning one in town. And I think it's really important that we be prepared to leash our dogs at all times, that you carry a leash, that you have your dog leashed where the city says it should be leashed. Um, and I'm really aware that off leash spaces in the city is a huge privilege. It is a huge, huge privilege. It is not a right by any means to have off leash space in a town. So 
just like reframing from a dog owner perspective of like trying to be really respectful, really conscious of my dog's impact on people that we have a kind of magical situation right now where we have this giant park where my dog can run anywhere she wants. And that is not something we should take for granted anywhere. Um, so that's one thing I just wanted to say. The next thing I want to talk about is about believe. Oh, okay. So back at the beginning of April, um, the dog committee put out a memo that had several sort of big picture questions. And I'm going to return to one of them now, which is the difference between harm and inconvenience, which is a thing I've been weighing a bunch in this decision. That's also like I've been chewing on forever and ever, like at least this whole month, maybe the month before, maybe all long time. Um, we need to believe people when they say they're being hurt. Like that is, that is a thing we, we, too often in the society in general, we dismiss people who have experienced harms, who have experienced women who experience sexism. Oh, it's not a big deal. You're making it up. People who experience racial microaggressions, you're making, you know, it's not a big deal, whatever. People are telling us they're being hurt and we need to listen to that. Like that is a fundamental value of mine. So I think that folks who can't use this park because they've been bit or antagonized by a dog not just people who are afraid of dogs, people who who are dog owners. This is a funny thing. People have accused me of being anti-dog um, in supporting some of these proposals. There are dog owners who need to walk their dogs on leash. There are dogs who can't be off leash because of their behavioral issues. Those people can't come to Hubbard Park because an off leash dog can come and chomp your dog who can only walk on leash, especially folks with small dogs. Like, So dogs are being harmed by the current like free for all off leash also. Um, I think also people who are who are potentially being harmed by the proposed policy, maybe some of our senior and elderly folks who might completely lose access to the park. And that is a true harm. That's a harm. There's a lot of us whose routines are going to change. That's true. It's just going to change. And that's a pain in the neck. Like I have the thing I do and I like to do it and I've got my life sorted. And what you mean? I have to walk an extra 10 minutes. I have to drive to a different place. I have to go on a different time. That's an inconvenience. That's a thing I accept as being a dog owner. I got to work my dog around what works for the majority of people because I live in a community. So I really really just want to come back to like listening to people when they say they've been hurt and listening for like what is actual harm versus oh this is just a bother to me this is annoying this is gonna upset my life a little um right now the folks who have off-leash dogs are the people who are holding the power in the park so something i also think about is who's holding the power um and what does it feel like to give up power it sucks <laughs> Like, it's great right now. Like, my dog can go anywhere. Freedom. Woohoo. I think when we have people being hurt, though, that requires the people in power to give up some power to make some space for the people who don't currently have space. And we're not talking about like a few complaining people. We're talking about a quarter to a half of Montpelier does not come to this park because of the dogs. And I know that the public comment in this meeting has been has not said that. And I just want you to know that of the emails and the written comments, Emily has compiled an amazing document. It's at least 80 pages long at this point. 40, half of those pages, whatever the number is now, half of them are people who said, I don't come to the park because of the off-leash dogs. I just So I just want to put that out there that like people who are speaking in microphones versus the people who are quietly writing emails, I think Kasia alluded to this. It really is a big, big chunk of Montpelier. Um, so that means giving up power for those of us who are in power. And it, and I feel like for me as a dog owner, that's worth it to me. That is really worth it to, so that all the citizens can use this town. Like I am giving something up that is like, it is a loss, it is sad, and it's made up for me by the fact that all of the people can use the town. So I just want to acknowledge that it hurts to give things up and it feels so deeply unfair and it feels like a loss. and. That's just part of the rebalancing we need to do when we make a space that really has equity for all people. So that's for this room. And it's also just for like the people who are listening and the public. Um, yeah, the last thing I'll say is that whatever decision is made, 
I'm so about education enforcement. Like it doesn't matter what the policy is chosen if there is no education about it and if there's no support for that. Um, I think we have an opportunity here since the implementation is not going to be tomorrow. It may be this fall. Further along, we have some opportunity for pre-policy education. Um, a lot of people get lost in the northern section. I would be personally happy to take a dog walk out to the northern section of let's get 20 people, tour around the trails, get more familiar with it. Maybe other people could volunteer that also. I think we really we're facing a big change and it's up. There's not going to be cops in Hubbard Park. There's not like an enforcer. We are in charge as a community of helping each other learn. So I guess I put that out to this group, but also to the larger public of how just think about how you can help help your fellow community members get on board with this, understand the policy, understand more about the canine code of conduct, learn the trails better. Like, let's be helpful to each other in this moment. That's going to be hard for a lot of people because it's a big change. So I'm willing to help with that education and I hope other people will too. Thanks for listening to also my long winded talk. Thanks, Dana. I wanted to follow that up with all of the support that we have gotten for among off-leash folks for some sort of time balance. Um, kind of going back to what Dana just said about harm for the people who can't walk their dog on a leash and they need access to the accessible all access trail. Um, there's no train, there's no plan. We are going to, we're planning to develop the trails in the Northern section a little bit more to make them more accessible, but there's no plan to make them all access. And so some access to that trail for off leash time, I think is really important to avoid harming some people. <laughs> I'm giving a long pause in case anybody wanted to speak up more, but I'm wondering if maybe it's time to think about a motion. Can I say one more thing? Yes. I'm also really worried given some of the um, kind of um, people people being really, really um, sad and slash saying that they're, some folks have said that they are so kind of against this, either of the new solutions that they aren't planning on following the rules. Um, in terms of like, reaching a sustainable solution. I think that part of why I've been losing sleep over this is because I really, really want it to be sustainable. And I'm worried that it won't be if people, you know, we should definitely do a ton of education and work on enforcement. Um, but I really don't want to be back here in five years if I'm still on the commission or for that next commission to have to face this again. Like, I just, yeah. <laughs> So, oh, Stephanie, I have a question. Yeah. Um, when we do vote, does it have to be unanimous? No. Okay. Uh, we are a five person commission and uh, a mid majority, so three. Yes. Yes. I just have a question on procedure because I believe that in a meeting way back, I don't remember exactly when, Alex said that any proposed modification would also still have to go for approval to city council. So I just want to clarify like process timeline after a vote today. And if the vote is what actually the vote would be, is it a park ordinance, the park the policy? Sort of the parks commission. Oh, you go ahead. So what the city ordinance says right now, 
the or the city ordinance lays out what the rules are for dogs in the city, and then it says there is an exception for dogs in Hubbard Park that follow the Canine Code of Conduct as as outlined by the Parks Commission. So there's some detail in there. If you just change the code of conduct, then it will follow word for word what the city ordinance says. Um, if you're changing rules to match what the city ordinance says, you know, about which more or less says dogs must be on leash, um, then you, you know, you would, that would I assume also be in compliance with the ordinance. So I think it's going to take some analysis when you decide on a new rule to be like, okay, does it match what's currently on the books? If it doesn't match the change of ordinance, you would need to make a recommendation to city council and then they would need to have two public hearings to change an ordinance. Um, and then they would vote to change the ordinance or not. So that's the process. If, um, it's deemed that we do need to change an ordinance. And try to... to require leashing of dogs in the core zone of Hubbard Park at all times. I will second. Discussion. I think that solution would be unjust and unsustainable. I understand where it's coming from. I think that more access for everyone is great, but I think that some access for the people who are currently unable to use the park is amazing, an amazing gain, great for a public park. And I don't think that, I think we're going to have some comp compliance challenges and people who really feel that it's not fair if we... Yeah, adopt that. I think that's my preference. Um, for the simplicity of it. Um, For the ease for the parks department for the work they have to do, uh, what it, you know they're going to have to do a lot of work regardless. Um, but I think I can err on the side of of a of a time in the morning. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we've talked about a lot in this process is that the park be there when people need it. Um, this zone proposal does not preclude anyone from using the park at any time of day. It means that, you know, if you want to go out for a run and don't want to get chased by a dog in the early morning, you can go. If you want to let your toddler get their energy out when they've been up since 630 in the morning, you can go to the park and not have to worry about them getting bowled over by an off-leash dog. Um, I understand and he, we've heard all of the concerns um, about our elders and access. And I mean, there's two sides of the coins. We've heard from lots of elders that do not use the park at all because they do not want to get knocked over by an off-leash dog. Um, so I think the solution that best serves everybody to have the park available to them when they need it is a zone-based proposal with no time overlay. All right. I, we've also heard from people who can only use the park during certain hours um, and need to use it with their dog off leash. Um, I Coming back to Dana's point about convenience, 
some people only have an hour, a certain time of day and um, seeing that they can't arrange their schedule so that that hour is in the morning um, and they could go to the core uh, when they have like a limited amount of time um, means that the park won't be there for them when they need it. So, we have a motion, <laughs> and we have a second. We've had some discussion. Can we do a roll call vote? Lincoln. I'm going to stand behind my motion to leash at all times in the core zone. Okay. Sure. Emily, <laughs> Kasha gets to call it. I I cannot support this um, proposal. No. I'm gonna stand by my yes. Is this the job of the park is coming? Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. I think it's best for the long term. No, it isn't. Tent. Sorry. It feels like the most durable solution. And it feels right, even though I know it feels really hard. It's really hard for me. It's really hard for all of us. I think we need to commit to improving the trails in the north part of the park. We need to improve the signs. We have work cut out for us, but it feels like the right thing for our community. And I have to say yes. So I think our next steps from here, that motion passes. Um, as I think we need to explore how the canine code of conduct gets updated. Um, and I know our next meeting in, um, our regular scheduled meeting in May is, um, Tuesday, May 21st, which we are planning for a walking meeting in Hubbard not 
focused on dogs, but focused rather on the trails and how we can build trails, um, especially in the new acquisition land. Um, the good news is that those trails will be more accessible than some of the trails in the park. The terrain there allows for um, fairly gentle, gradual grade from Wyndham Drive neighborhood into seven fireplaces. Um, so that's going to be a different discussion, but I think also really critical to this discussion and going forward and making sure there's space for everybody in the parks. Um, so that's going to be a walking meeting. And then I think at the following meeting in June, um, we're planning to focus on implementation plan, um, which I know there have been a lot of really wonderful ideas from people in the community um, throughout this process. I know staff have ideas, commissioners have ideas. We're going to pull together um, what that looks like um, and talk about how we implement um, the um, new, newly updated canine cone of conduct going forward. Um, and with a goal to be implementing this fall. And with that, I think we are adjourned at 651. <laughs>